Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and initial impressions on Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. Now, uh, this is a really difficult game for me to cover in a lot of ways, uh, mostly because it's a really different from a lot of the games that I typically cover on the channel these days. You know, most of the time I kind of go out of my way to feature games that are a little bit more obscure, a little bit less well-known, perhaps in some stage of development, uh, and otherwise just not your typical standard AAA quote-unquote finished game. Um, but the simple truth of the matter is this game for me has a lot of significance in a lot of ways and I felt like it was a important enough game and a meaningful enough game to me personally for me to want to try to put it on the channel and, and cover it but having said that I very quickly realized when I was thinking about doing this video that trying to cover this game in the way I typically do is just not going to work you know typically I would break down all of the things the game does kind of uh, praise the things that I think are good about it, uh, point out critiques and, and things for possible improvement in future versions and that sort of thing. But the, the funny thing about this game is it's so complete and so polished and such a huge elephant in the room sort of experience that it's really difficult to approach it from that standpoint because other reviewers, you know, people who are reviewing AAA games on the regular have already dissected this game a million different ways. You know, there's been so many reviews written already, there's been so much coverage of this game from so many different sources that I really feel like the only thing that I can contribute to this whole discussion of this game is my own personal experience with it and my feelings about it and why I think it's such an important game and, and really, in a lot of ways, one of the best games I've played in a very long time. And uh, for me, I have to go all the way back to when I first started playing games in the 70s. Yes, I am that old. <laughs> And what this game represents in a lot of ways to me is the future of what I imagined games would be like when I was a little kid. And I think, you know, that's a difficult context maybe for some people who are watching this video to relate to. You know, if you're, if you're a 20-something or even a 30-something, you may not necessarily have the appropriate... Uh, life experience to relate to that analogy but it nonetheless is how I feel about this game you know when I was sitting uh, in arcades plunking quarters into Pong and Pac-Man and things of that nature way back in the day this is what I imagined in my head as the future of video games like where we would eventually get to the point where the technology existed to make something that was so lifelike and so immersive and so just engaging that it would almost become a new tier of game, right? Like, the thing about this game, for me personally, that's so striking is how much it impresses me not just in the ways that I typically judge a game, but in the way that I look at this game and see that vision of what I saw when I was a little kid imagining what games would be like in the future. And so, obviously, anything else I say has to be taken in that context, right? obviously I really like this game I think it's pretty amazing and I'm not gonna make any apologies for having that opinion but at the same time I'm very cognizant of the fact that there may be people who look at this game and play it without that sort of context who may not appreciate it in the same way or think as highly of it as a result um, 
I always am very fond of saying there's no such thing as a perfect game, and I would continue to hold true to that statement and that way of thinking, even having played 15 hours of this game. It is exceptional. It is magnificent in oh so many very important ways, but I would definitely be using hyperbole and overstating the fact to say that it was a perfect game. Obviously, perfection is something that this game aspires to. It is very meticulous in the way that it approaches just about every aspect of its being, uh, from the environmental detail to the gameplay mechanics to the mission design to the narrative elements to the little easter eggs and uh, extra bonuses and activities and little nuanced minutia of the game this is a game that screams excellence and it's very difficult to critique this game as a result of that because when I look at the things that I find to be perhaps less than amazing, it's hard for me to really judge them too harshly because taken in the context of what the rest of the game is and how just utterly, amazingly well this game does what it does as a whole, any critique I could level against it almost feels hollow. You know. Are there moments where the controls maybe flip out a little bit or where animations get a little wonky or uh, the physics in the game get a little wonky? Absolutely there are. There are those moments as there are in any 3D-based, physics-based uh, simulation of anything that approaches reality. Now, having said that, I will say that this game suffers from those issues far less than most you know when those issues occur they are certainly noticeable but because they're so infrequent and because they're so subtle when they do occur they're very very easy to overlook at least for me they were or have been and continue to be um the bottom line for me with this game is that it is as close to perfect as I think I've seen anybody come maybe ever. And that's just a crazy statement for me to make given the number of games that I've played and the number of really amazing, awesome games that I have seen and experienced over the years. But I think it needs to be said that this game, in a lot of ways, raises the bar for what my expectations of any game from this point forward are going to be. You know, I think the easiest way for me to put this is simply to say that I wish every game that I played were as good as Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. And that is not in one particular area. Like I say, it's not just about gameplay or narrative or mechanics or controls or you know any of these individual facets that generally coalesce together to make a, a good game experience. I can honestly say that treating all of those aspects as a whole, this is a bar raising game. And I can't help but be amazed at the sheer quality of this game, especially considering the scale and scope of it. Like, it would be one thing if this game were as good and as polished and as stellar as it is if it were a small scale project. But to do something this huge in terms of the environmental size, the sheer number of missions that you get to go on, the activities you get to participate in, all the different things you get to experience, and to maintain the level of quality that I've seen throughout this game so far is simply staggering to me. 
I can't even imagine how the people that made this game hold this off so expertly and didn't go crazy you know just didn't didn't go completely mad from obsessing over all of these little details and you know maybe maybe there's a big rubber room at konami where they just locked all the devs after this thing was finished because they were just no good to the outside world anymore maybe that's a thing i don't know but all i can think of as a content creator myself is just how utterly impressive this game is and it's a real shame that the video game industry is so prone to hyperbole because I really feel like even as I'm recording this that a lot of what I'm saying is going to fall on deaf ears because people have gotten so accustomed to tuning out uh, excessive praise of a product in this industry. But let me tell you, as somebody who's played thousands upon thousands of games, this is one of the best that I've ever played. And I'm only scratched the surface, admittedly, of what it has to offer. But I already feel confident in saying that I have gotten my money's worth out of this game. It is a technically and artistically impressive work that I believe should be experienced by anybody who considers themselves a serious video game enthusiast. And even if the rest of the game would completely fall apart, even if everything would just go completely south and sideways from the 15 hour point that I'm into the game right now, I would still feel satisfied with what I've experienced up to this point and would feel confident that I could go back and revisit the parts of the game that I've already played and enjoyed and mine those for additional enjoyment and pleasure for many more hours without even going any further into the game's story uh, or content. And so I think that's the easiest way for me to sum up my feelings on the game. Obviously, in case it hasn't been absolutely clear up to this point, I think this is a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic game. And... I cannot recommend it highly enough and it is easily in my mind the best game that I've played in the past several years. So I think what I'm going to do here is just let the game speak for itself uh, as I finish out this mission that I uh, chose to show off some gameplay without revealing too much about the uh, narrative and story of the game so enjoy the rest of this footage and by all means if you are thinking about checking this game out or you think you might have any interest whatsoever in playing it do go and do that i highly 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 recommend it until next time this is metal gear solid 5 the phantom pain
Please select a landing zone. Support helicopter requested. The enemy's given up their search for you. But they're not giving the all clear just yet. Stay alert.
concentrated. All right, you're out of the hot zone. No enemy forces in pursuit. Mission complete. Departing. Yes, mission complete. Boss, that was exceptional.